and being able to rebound from the surgery and continue to lose weight and lose 75 pounds in 10 months. What was going on inside the ears that, and in your heart too, that really made this possible? Well, I think the first, the first stage of that, or the first step was watching John be so laser focused, Mm -hmm. watching him like just flip a switch. And I was, and thinking, how could he do that so easily? What made that so easy? What gave him that strength? And then wanting and and the amount of pride I felt towards what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to feel that about me. And I want him to feel that about me. I want him to, when he looks at me to say, that's, that's my wife. She is, she's total badass. That's my wife. You know, she can do anything. Hey there, my friend, it's Dr. Anthony Balduzzi from the Fit Mother Project, and I want to welcome you back to another episode here on the podcast. And boy, do we have an awesome conversation to share with you today between myself and one of our amazing program members, Diane O'Brien. Diane joined us when she was 59, and she needed to make some serious changes to her health. She was weighing well over 200 pounds. Her doctor told her she was pre-diabetic. She had plantar fasciitis, high blood pressure, a whole bunch of other medical problems. And she couldn't find, after years of struggling with fat diets, a way to actually keep the weight off long-term. Well, her husband, John, and Diane ended up joining the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project, respectively, in 2019. And in just 10 months, Diane lost 75 pounds and got into some of the strongest and best shape of her life right before her 60th birthday. And she's been sustaining it for two years since. So this is a powerful conversation because we're bringing on a woman who's really walked the walk, who is living the Fit Mother ethos who's found a way to make this sustainable for herself, for her husband, for her family, all while being an empty nester, a grandma, running a flower business. She does so much, and you can really see her passion come through in this conversation. And really, she shares some great practical tips on stuff like meal prep, what works for them, the right kind of mindset, and putting your excuses behind you and really stepping into your power. And she shows what's possible at 62 years young. So I know you're going to really enjoy this conversation like I did. Let's get into this convo with Diane O'Brien. All right, Dan, welcome officially to the Fit Mother Podcast. As I said to you, this is a long time coming. I've wanted to have you on for so long because you have such a wonderful story. You've been such a huge part of our community. So first off, thank you for coming. Well, thank you for having me. I've been looking forward to this as well. So to kick off this convo, um, I would love to share with everyone listening and watching a little bit about you, some of your background, your name, your age, where you're from, a little bit about your family, and then we'll get into your Fit Mother journey. Okay. Well, my name is Diane O'Brien. Um, I live in California, born and raised in California. And, um, oh, I'm 62. I'll be 63 next year. And, um, let's see, I am the mother of one daughter, beautiful daughter. Oh, she's, uh, now about, uh, 42 and no, I'm sorry, 41. Don't push it. And she's given us four beautiful grandchildren. And I'm married to the craziest, most amazing man in the world, John, who's also a fit father. Um, and, uh, but he's a Boston boy. So it's East coast meets West coast. Yeah. And, uh, we've been together now. Um, we've been together 32 years, married 31. And, uh, so we're doing this journey together and, um, with the full support of our family. Okay. So let's get into that. Let's rewind a couple years ago Mm. um, to how you kind of got started with the Fit Mother Project. What was going on in your life and John's life at the time? And tell me about that. Gosh, it's so deep. It's so deep. Um, Well, I, um, I have been battling. I was very thin, very athletic as a young person. And um, I had a medical problem about a year after John and I got married. And, um, the, um, medical regimen they, they put me on to try and control. It was a lot of steroids Mm -hmm. and it just blew my whole body up. And I, um, and I, I yo-yoed for years and years, uh, with that. And, um, John yo-yoed right along with me. And, um, I spent a good part of those 31 years, um, either very overweight or, where I wanted to be and yet the, where I wanted to be periods never lasted for very long. And, um, so fast forward, uh, to leading up to fit mother and fit father. Um, 
John and I had joined a gym, a very beautiful gym here in town and, you know, Olympic pools and lap pools and family pools and adult pools. I mean, it was two stories of, of heaven. And I even hired a personal trainer and I was, this is it. This is, this is really it. And um, I had a lot of medical issues going on that I was kind of um, brushing under the carpet and trying to avoid um, dealing with and it kind of got escalated to a point where my doctor said, you, you have to do something. That's when I hired the personal trainer and I did really, really well. I mean, she beat me up but good and I played along really nice and I got really strong and, but I could never get the weight under to where it would stay under control. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I just couldn't out exercise what I was putting in my mouth. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then the holidays came and, you know, I kind of slip off the rails with all the, the eating and the family and going out. And John and I are empty nesters. Like I said, our kid's 41. So, um, and she lives right here in town. But um, we kind of were like kept going into this. Well, let's just go out to eat. Let's just go out to eat. I'm going to work late. Let's get out. You know, we'll, ju we'll just grab a bite on the way home. And those bites, because we're not really fast food people, we're always at some nice restaurant, two, three glasses of wine later, you mm -hmm. know, some rich, opulent meal. And the pounds just kind of crept on. And even though we both knew we were getting more and more overweight, we didn't seem to stop. Mm -hmm. And we kept thinking, well, we'll just go to the gym harder. We'll go longer. We'll, we'll spend more time there. And... um it was little fixes, just little fixes, but nothing that was nothing that seemed sustainable. And I really couldn't put my finger on it. Mm -hmm. And then, the, like I said, the holidays came, we kind of slipped off the rails and, um, and I'm uh, my trade. I have my biggest um, holiday a year in February, which leads to a lot of stress eating. So all through January and until February 14th is over, I am stress eating mm -hmm. and probably drinking way, way, way too much. Mm -hmm. And uh, we stopped, we really gotten sloppy with going to the gym and we have a gym in our house and have no excuse. Mm -hmm. um, so I would walk by that gym room, just kind of putting my hand up going, I, not today. And, um, and the weight just kept coming on and coming on. And um, I finally had made the decision one day to say, Johnny, you know, we're pouring a lot of money into this fancy gym membership for the two of us. And, um, you know, I was ready to tell him, I was trying to find a way to tell him, I'm, I'm going to cancel the membership. And I had kind of gotten into this kind of funky mood of being resigned to the fact that this is just, this is it. This is, this is the best it is. I might as well just let the doctor put me on all kinds of drugs and mm -hmm. take care of all the, the long grocery list of things that he wanted me to take care of. And, um, I, so as I was awkwardly presenting it to him. Um, he just looks at me and says, well, then I guess you're not going to like this at all. <laughs> he says, but um, I joined this group called Fit Father Project. And he goes, um, and I want you to do it with me. Because we always do everything together. Mm -hmm. If we're being bad, we're doing it together. If we're being mm -hmm. good, we're doing it together. Whatever it is we're doing, we're usually doing it together. We're thick as thieves. We're freaking frack. I mean, when you see one, you see the other. And um, it was like my my poor head exploded in that moment. I was like, oh, my God, you've got to be kidding me. And, I mean, it was about the money, but it wasn't about the money. And it, it, it wasn't like that was going to break the bank or anything, but it was the principle involved. Of we had tried and tried all these other things. And if I showed you the cabinet right now, of all the exercise tapes and diet books and whatnot, you'd be like, well, that's a lot of money. And, um, but yet we, we never really made anything or found anything that stuck that really resonated. And, um, and we know our way around the kitchen. We just liked really good stuff in the kitchen. And so that, that didn't help. Um, but he told me that that day, and he literally pulled the trigger on that in May of 19. Mm -hmm. And I was so angry at him. But because we do everything together, yes, that first morning I put on my 
my gym shorts and okay, well, the closest thing to gym shorts that fit me. <laughs> and <laughs> one of his t-shirts and I slinked behind him to the gym and um, he said he didn't want to do this at the gym, but at home so we could learn learn how to do it, not look like awkward people at the gym because everyone looks at everybody there. Mm-hmm. And so um, I kind of tagged along in the beginning, you know, that month, that month of May. Mm-hmm. And um, I did my first eight packs and made all the way up to six, tapped out. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he went further. I don't know how far he went, but I tapped out. I, I just, it was like, oh my gosh, this is really, really hard. And, uh, and it looks so easy on paper and it looks so easy watching you do it's like anybody could do that. Mm -hmm. Not anybody can do that. You know, it, it took effort and because John's in charge of the food, um, I naturally ate what he was eating. And so we were closing in on the end of that first month of May and, um, I, I got on the scale and I went, huh. I I lost six pounds. That's really weird because, oh, here's a huge caveat. John gave up beer. And Mm. if you knew anything about East Coast men, they're weaned on beer. Mm. And so for him to give up beer, just like that, didn't even look back. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll do it too. But I don't drink beer. I drink wine. Mm -hmm. I'll do that too. The pub was literally across the street from my shop my business and their windows faced mine. They saw me lock the door. My glass of wine was on the bar at my seat Mm -hmm. before I even crossed the bloody street. Mm -hmm. And this was like every day I'd do this after work and he was going straight home and I was starting to feel a little bit guilty about midway through the month Mm -hmm. and not guilty enough to quit all the way, but guilty enough to hide it really well. Yeah. And so I started thinking to myself, huh, you're hiding drinking because you have a one hour gap between when you close your business, he closes his business and actually makes it into town. Mm -hmm. I could kill two glasses of wine in that hour and still beat him home. Mm -hmm. And then I, that really made me feel horrible. It made me feel guilty. It made me feel like, Wow, this is really lousy. Why are you doing this? And so I immediately pulled way, way back and only did it like once or twice a week. But then I was still really feeling guilty. And then the end of the month came and he sat me down and says, "Um, so how'd you do? And uh, I said, well, I wrapped up the month with a nice little eight, nine pound uh, weight loss. And uh, how about you? And he had some insane number, like 16 pounds. And it's like, okay, well, that's not fair. But mm-hmm. in truth be told, he was more dedicated than I. Mm-hmm. So um, he, I remember it like, like it was yesterday. We were sitting outside enjoying the beautiful weather. And he says, well, I got a present for you. And I go, what? And because I didn't see any packages. And he goes, um, I get a gift you, fit mother how would that make you feel? And oh, I'm getting all choked up. I literally started crying, literally started crying. I mean, but this time I wasn't mad. This time I was so happy. I couldn't believe it It was like, oh my gosh, I I, like, like when, when can I have it? And he goes like, right now, you can have it now. And I was like, yes, please. And I, I dove in. I mean, when I brought it up and, and I was so excited. I was literally shaking. I'm, I couldn't hit print quick enough. I was printing all the materials. I was watching all the videos. I, I don't think I, I think I ran out the battery on my iPad before I finished. <laughs> I had to plug in just to keep going. And, yeah. um, and I mean, I literally dove in all in. But, and by the time I started on June 3rd, I was able to do the apex all the way up and down. Nice. So I was happy and I still have my Bible. Can you see? Uh Yeah, I can. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is it. This is what I live and die by this in my journal. I have those two things. Those are two of my 
my things that I keep with me all the time. So, but that's how my journey got started. And uh, there was just no looking back. I just couldn't wait for the next thing to unfold. So I'm curious. I'm, I'm thinking now, it's such a powerful story how John gently guided you, timing all fit in. You had enough willingness, but then the desire to commit even deeper once you saw some results and you saw results without being perfect. What I'm really curious about is as you're going through the setup steps of your Fit Mother Phase 1 program, what are you writing down as your mission statement initially? What, what were some of the things that were really connecting with you at that time? I, di- I didn't do it like that. Mm-hmm. I I, I kind of did it differently mm-hmm. because... Um, by the time, by the time he had gifted me that the last two weeks in May, after I had that little coming to Jesus meeting with myself and confessing my sins about my drinking, Mm -hmm. um, and going all in with no alcohol, by the way, after that, I Mm -hmm. I did quit. I did. And, uh, if John could be laser focused, I was going to be laser focused too, but Those first two weeks made me look at myself so deep and so hard. And all of a sudden now I was kind of reflecting back on that day on the porch when he said he bought Fit Father and I got upset because as I said, I had already resigned myself to this is it. I'm always going to be overweight from here. I'm I'm getting too old to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, women at 59 don't do this. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's crazy. And, um, but I didn't feel 59 on the inside or my mentality. Yeah. And so those last two weeks of May was this just gut wrenching, um, like heartfelt dissection of my own thinking and how I was my internal dialogue, how I was mm-hmm. talking to myself and what I, knowing that if I, talk to myself in that negative manner, that's going to just perpetuate itself. And, mm-hmm. and I need to, to turn this around and start having a better, like positive dialogue, internal dialogue. Mm-hmm. And that, so I really started already doing that. And I didn't even know what a mission statement was yet because he, John didn't share that with me. That was his private journey. And I respect that. Mm-hmm. I see his journal and, I may move it, but I would never open it. I would never peer into that that privacy of his. And he doesn't do that to mine either. So I didn't know there was such a thing as a mission statement. So Mm -hmm. I had actually mentally written my mission statement long before I knew I needed to. And so when I read about doing my mission statement, I was like, I already got this figured out. Yeah. So let me, hold on. Let me just jot this down real quick so I don't forget yeah. it. And I was yeah. also really big on um, taking it further, capturing it with photos, mm-hmm. um, writing a log of being, you know, um, body measurements. And, um, and what were those medical reasons that um, a lot of people have and just think that 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 is what it is. You can't fix that with good nutrition and exercise, not knowing that you actually can. Mm -hmm. So So take me, take me, I want to do a little side by side here of where you started around Mm -hmm. 216 pounds and talk about some of the medical conditions. And then I want to fast forward in the 10 months where you ended up. I want to get snapshot. And then I want to fill in the gaps in the middle of like what it took to get there. But I just want people to be able to hear like, you were here and you got here at 59 what was the okay. what was the difference? Okay, okay. I think I I think I can work through that real quick. Um, so technically, on June third, yes, I was two sixteen, uh-huh. but as I said, I lost some. So I'm thinking I was more around two twenty four, two twenty five, starting in when I tagged along with John. And how tall are you for those? I'm listening? five six. Okay, so I'm five, five six, two twenty five at fifty nine years. At fifty nine years old. Now I had. Uh-huh plantar fasciitis, both feet, um, high blood pressure, um, high cholesterol. Um, I had some swelling in my legs. I was getting that. Um, and I got the diagnosis of pre-diabetic 
And my doctor used the words morbidly obese all in the same sentence. Mm -hmm. And I had gotten that diagnosis like right around probably November of 18. Mm -hmm. You know, right around the time I was eating all that good holiday food. Mm -hmm. And um, so that took me into where I really started at 216, five foot six. Mm -hmm. And, um, I had seen my doctor and, um, in May and he wanted to put me on a regimen of pills. Oh, and I had fancy, really expensive inserts for both my shoes because it hurt to get out of bed, Mm -hmm. you know, it hurt to walk because of my feet. And, uh, so I got the orthotics for my shoes and everything. And he showed me this list of all these different drugs he wanted to give me. And I was like, well, how about you give me three months and we'll revisit this in three months. And if you still feel the same, then I'll let you give me those drugs. If, if I haven't done something to show serious steps to correcting what's, what's wrong. He agreed. And this doctor has been my doctor for about 20 years. So Dr. Joe knows me. And um, so he said, okay, he goes, but we've been down this path before. What's different? And he's really blunt. And as a matter of fact, because he's seen me weight go up and down and up and down over the years in my weight and telling me how unhealthy that was. And so he just probably thought it was another fad diet I was going to do. And so I did that and I went and saw him. um, I think it was, it was October of that, of that year. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, for a general checkup, you want to do my blood pressure and everything. So, um, oh, and sorry, let me go back. In June, I actually lost 18 pounds the first mm-hmm. month on Fit Mother. And that was by virtue of quitting drinking and no eating out. So just us eating clean. Mm-hmm. And so I had this massive weight loss all of a sudden. And I was feeling pretty full of myself. Mm-hmm. So I had to see him for a blood, uh, blood pressure check. I was like, you know, why we're at it, give me the little lab sheet and let's go do my blood work real quick. Let's just take a peek and see where we're at and get a bet, another benchmark. So we did. And, um, he sent me an email. He said, I got your labs. And he goes, I see remarkable differences. So I was like, well, well I want to see these. And so <laughs> he sent me a bunch of charts and graphs. I was like, okay, well, I- not a doctor, but that looks pretty good. Those numbers look like they're supposed to be going where they're going. And all of a sudden saw this huge shift from being really unhealthy to getting like here, you know, where I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, he's backed off. So I said, can we go another round of three months before you bug me again? And so he said, yeah. And then, uh, well, it was Christmas Eve. So what are we into it now? Six, yeah, six months? June June 2019 to Christmas Eve Christmas 2019. Eve. Yeah, yeah. Six, it was six months. Yeah, it was Christmas Eve. It was a beautiful day. I s- revealed myself at Christmas to my family, and I purposely avoided them for months. And because everyone was traveling at Thanksgiving, I didn't see anyone. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, you know. I, Bought a beautiful new outfit. John had a new outfit. We were both rocking it that that mm-hmm. Christmas. And when we walked in the door, jaws dropped mm-hmm. because we really didn't talk about what we were doing. We just did what we were doing. And um, it was really an amazing night. I'll never forget it. But that was also the night when I went to bed that night. And I was laying there vacillating in joy over the day. And I put my hand on my leg and felt, and I felt this weird strange bump on my thigh. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wait a minute. And I had hit my goal that day too. On top of everything else, I set my original goal was 150 pounds. I hit 150 pounds on so Christmas 150 Eve. pounds on Christmas Eve, which means you had come from, man, that's over 50. That's, six, that's a lot of weight. 60 yeah. plus pounds. Yeah. Yep, 66 pounds on by then on Christmas Eve. Nice. And so, I mean, I, I, that was the best present I got. I didn't need anything under the tree. When I stepped on the scale that morning, you know, I, I was, I was emotional. I was crying. I was excited. I got 
flying into the kitchen and he's like, oh gosh, is this a good scale day? And I'm jumping up and down. I hit my goal. I hit my goal. And I I was just, I was beyond the beyond with, with joy. And then I found the lump that night and uh, I was like terrified at what could this be? And uh, I I chose not to tell anybody because I didn't want to ruin Christmas day. So I just said Mm -hmm. nothing. And uh, made an appointment to see my doctor, and I didn't get to see him until right after New Year's. Mm-hmm. And um, they did a biopsy, and it was inconclusive. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, and I had reset my goal on New Year's for another 10 pounds. So I wanted 140, and um, because that would put me away only two pounds away from my weight I was when I married John. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so back in 1990, this would go way back. And so anyways, um, they did the biopsies. They did three biopsies, and then they all came back inconclusive. And I got the news that they were going to have to do a full cancer surgery on my leg. And instead of what they wanted to do is if it came back um, benign, they would just take out the minimal amount of tissue because it was wedged in between my hamstring and that tendon that runs up or down the side of your leg and it was just wedged in there about the size of a walnut Mm -hmm. and um so he told me the bad news that he was going to have to you know do the full surgery it was going to make me lose about five percent of my hamstring Mm -hmm. in that surgery and um i cried a little bit about it um not a lot um, I cried just a little bit. And then I said to him, okay, so let's talk about a recovery plan. Let, let's, let's talk about that. And I said, and by the way, I said, you, you've read my chart. And I said, and you've seen my legs. And I said, you better be the most crafty, cleanest cutting doctor in the history of surgical time. He said, I didn't go through all the trouble to have the best squat legs in the world. <laughs> for you to go hacking it up, taking a tumor out. And God bless him. He's such a beautiful doctor. Anyway, so he said, okay. And we talked about a game plan. And so um, for recovery. And um, it was hard keeping me down. It was hard keeping me down. Yeah. Um, I, I was out of recovery and um, and on my feet within minutes of coming to and I said, get me out of this bed. Get me moving around this hospital room. Let's get some circulation going. Let's do what we got to do. <laughs> and uh, he was like, I knew it. I knew I couldn't keep you down. Mm-hmm. And so I rehabbed that leg pretty darn quick. Yeah. I did that surgery end of February. Now, mind you, I can't exercise. Mm-hmm. Just had my leg cut open. Yep. And <laughs> so I was really bummed about that. Um and I had to stay off of it. He said four to six weeks, three weeks in, we were already doing, um, actually two weeks in, we were doing light on the couch exercises. Mm-hmm. Three weeks in, I was doing on the floor, light exercises, four weeks in gentle squats. Mm-hmm. And I don't have any exterior stitches. The man was, mm-hmm. he was a God with my leg. I barely have a scar. And so, so there's nothing external. And, um, uh, use some big plastic sheet to cover it all up and and that kept everything together so it's 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 perfect and um so i got to i made it all through march rehabbing and was back to exercising back in the gym um by april 1st and i stepped on the scale the morning of april 3rd i something about the third with me yeah of every month (laughs) Um, I hopped on the scale and I saw 140. And 140. And one, so this is, oh, wow. That's, that's ten, that was literally 10 months from when you started. Yeah. With having a big surgical procedure. Yeah, right. I lost that last hard 10 pounds. Now, granted, it took three months to do it. Sure. But that was three months. It could have gone the other way. All right. I got to pause you for a second because I think the story is like, it's so... It's so compelling, but like what I'm, what I'm thinking to myself right now, as I'm hearing you speak, Diane is for years, 
you were in this groove of the wine and the food and the weight gain and the, we'll call it like the rut, but it was really just like your routine at the time. Mm -hmm. And now we have like what, what appears in 10 months of like the mindset of a conqueror. Like you were out there kicking butt, taking names throughout this entire process. What were some of like the internal shift that happened that made you to get to this point? I mean, you set down the wine glass, no more heading over across the street. I want to know what shifted internally because you know, you're just, you're on fire. And I mean, to the rebound from the surgery and continue to lose weight and lose 75 pounds in 10 months. What was going on inside the ears that, and in your heart too, that really made this possible? Well, I think the first, the first stage of that, or the first step was watching John be so laser focused, mm -hmm. watching him like just flip a switch and I was and thinking, how could he do that so easily? What made that so easy? What gave him that strength? And then wanting and, and the amount of pride I felt towards what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to feel that about me. Yeah. And I want him to feel that about me. Yeah. I want him to, when he looks at me to say, that's, that's my wife. She is, she's total badass. That's my wife. Yeah. You know, yeah. she can do anything. Yeah. And um, and I'm extremely competitive, extremely yeah. competitive. Um, I like to win. Um, I'll accept losing. I'm a great, kind of a graceful loser, but I'll accept it. But, um, but not if it's something I can, I think I can control. Yeah. And my, when I made that decision to quit drinking and then, and it was a day by day thing, it wasn't, Oh, I'm done drinking, but it was, I, every day it had to be a, a conscious thought about what I was doing and the choices I was making and why, what was my reasoning? Why was I doing this? And that always drew me back to my why. And which we learn about when we start is finding your why. Mm -hmm. And, um, I kept going back to that and it actually felt good. Like, I had like this internal bragging going on with myself of look what you did, look what you did. And that feeling that I got was like a high that I, I got out of that. And mm -hmm. like when I would be in a social situation and somebody would offer me a drink and say, no, that's cool. I, I, I'm not drinking. Oh, did you, are, are, did you quit? Are you an alcoholic? Are you okay? And it was like, um, I'm not sure any of those things matter. What matters is I'm doing something for myself and that's good enough. I don't owe you an explanation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I found that in social situations, people like to um, call you out on stuff like that. So I found a quick fix. Um, and that was um, sparkling water with lime mm -hmm. and a drink. Yeah, no, one, no one knows the difference, right? No, the minute I had that in my hand, I was cool again. Yeah. But it didn't, it wasn't for, it wasn't for them so much as it was for me to make them stop bugging me about yeah. my, so, my, 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 my choices. I and, totally understand that. It seems like you, the personal power you're getting from this internal competition, mm -hmm. reflecting in the mirror of John and his dedication. And also I know your journal and your tracking where you're checking the boxes going up in weights, like this competitive drive that kind of got re well, not even re reactivated. Cause I'm sure you have that already. You just shifted it into this domain of your life. That seems like a really powerful reason why this happened. Well, one of the biggest realizations was something that came early on. And, um, and I shared this with the girl that, um, that I hired as a trainer, cause I'm actually still friends with her. Mm -hmm. She's, she's a lovely, lovely, very talented lady. Um, uh, but one of the things that we realized very early in the, in the game was the clean eating, mm -hmm. but it wasn't just the clean eating. It was the fact that the nutritional program didn't eliminate an entire food group. It didn't right. say, okay, you can't have any carbs or you can't eat any healthy fats or, you know, you can only have 20 grams of fat per day or yeah. whatever the ridiculous restrictions were. It wasn't that it was still eating all the foods we really, really liked just cleaning them up. Yeah. 
Then once we realized, and, and we kept beating that whole mantra, this is 80% nutrition, 20% mm-hmm. exercise. And everybody kept saying, oh my God, what's your diet? What diet are you on? And I'm like, I'm not on a diet. I changed the way I eat. I changed the way I fuel myself. Yeah. And, um, and I work in a historic downtown that's loaded with um, quaint little mom and pop restaurants. Mm-hmm. And I know everyone. I mean, literally everyone. And I like getting to know the workers, the meat and potatoes behind the operation. Yeah. I.e. the chefs. Yeah. And so I had a reputation, or I still do, when I walk in. I don't order on menu. I never have. It's like she wants grilled chicken. <laughs> and are we carb cycling today? Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. you know? Are we just going greens and meat, you know? And um, and if I was, and I loved it because I'd, you know, I'd say, no, no, I'm carb cycling today, double veggies, you know, and mm-hmm. just clean protein. Surprise me. Yeah. And, and so I still got to eat out and I was still just shredding the weight. Yeah. So, but I did hit one plateau during the journey mm-hmm. in November. Yeah. Let's let's talk about that plateau, but before we get there, yeah. I think there's an important point you brought up is, is I just want to really emphasize is you were able to make this nutrition plan like fit your life and your regular rhythms. You have the flower shop, you're social around your 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 local area and your neighborhood, and you're able to like guide it so that you're still doing the things that you love with some changes for sure. And mm-hmm. it just it's become your plan. And I think that's so special. I couldn't see you being as successful if you didn't like bake this into your life and not just make this another like diet type thing. So that's very apparent. I want to know before we talk about the plateau too, what did you do for your breakfast? What was like your day in your life? Um, What was the day in your life as you're losing the 75 pounds you from waking up through your nutrition plan, what you have for breakfast, snacks, lunch, dinner, et cetera. Run me through like an average day or maybe even what you do now so people can kind of get an idea well it's it's easy peasy because i still do it now okay and the only difference is is with maintaining i'm not working at a deficit mm-hmm. at maintaining I, I i stay on my tde and i mm-hmm. try and hit those numbers if i go over i adjust mm-hmm. and throw a fast in there and quickly get rid yeah. of a, exactly. a weekend of misbehaving yeah. uh, but anyways i mine was so simple and because of both John and I run uh, our own companies, um, our days start really early. Our phones start off really early. It's really annoying. Um, so we found that we were having trouble working out in the morning like everyone else was. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I really didn't want to get up at 4.30. We didn't have kids to work around or anything like that. It was just our work that we had to work mm-hmm. around. And so, but I love the shake. I still love the shake. And and to be honest, this this can sound crazy as heck. I've never gone off the original chocolate shake. Yeah, it's my favorite too. It is my favorite. I love it. I never tire of it. I I don't care if I'm picking chia seeds out of my teeth for yeah. you know, or that's what the um, flosser is for, you know. Yeah. It, it's somehow weirdly satisfying to floss after a shake. Yeah, totally. But um, the shake was always it. And I would have that usually around, um, I would blend those up around 8, 8.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then we would peel out and go do, you know, into our own directions, go do work. And I would take, we both take lunches every day and it's always meal prep. And we meal prep in a way that we separate what they are. And because those little black bowls that you would make them all fancy, look all pretty and you put them in the freezer and in a week you're looking at it and it looks like the frozen tundra. And you're like, what is that? Yeah. I'm asking him, what is this? And he's like, I don't know. He goes, I don't want to eat that though. So we changed the way we meal prep and we actually do lots and lots of proteins, um, lots of veggies and where we get them all frozen in um, already portioned out Mm -hmm. and they're all, and we do um, 
Same thing with the complex carbs. John likes certain carbs that I don't. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like, uh, I'm always been a rice person. So brown rice is my, my go-to. I haven't managed to master quinoa yet. So (laughs) I kind of avoid it because I just can't seem to cook that one very well. And I'm not a big potato person. So sweet potatoes don't appeal to me. Mm -hmm. So if I'm usually eating a carb, it's going to be either through some sort of veggie I'm eating that has them in it naturally, or I'm adding in brown rice. Nice. And uh, it, to me, again, I just need to fuel myself during the day and enjoy what I'm eating. Mm-hmm. And the way we prepare it, it's very, very tasty. So I will take, you know, my carb, my veggie, my protein, and then an afternoon snack could be something like um, so Greek yogurt with some organic seeds or just some organic seeds or nuts, um, sometimes a, um, a protein bar, and then um, get home and dinner again. A perfect plate every time. Mm-hmm. Perfect plate. It was easy peasy. Yeah. I didn't have to think about it. And Protein, so- veggies, serving of carbs, yep. or healthy fats. But like if your mentality is shake in the morning, you have a couple of these go-to mm-hmm. snacks you have regularly, and then the lunch and the dinner are pretty similar. It's like mm-hmm. veggies and protein, except yep. for lunch, you basically pre-pack them. They're frozen and that works for you guys having them totally portioned out. So there's no thinking. And it's it's so apparent to me why you lost 75 pounds because it's just so structured, right? And it's so repeatable and you actually enjoy it. Mm-hmm. But talk to talk to the person right now who's listening to this being like, man, is is Diana a robot? Like, does she enjoy her food or her life? Does this why is this still fun for her? Like, talk talk about the enjoyment factor of this and like and 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 balancing the idea of consistency and variety and some of these things. Like this has obviously been sustainable for you. Like, let's let's speak to what your relationship to it's like. Yeah, well, we've been doing it two and a half years. We I guess in one sense, um, our ability to meal prep is a bit robotic in the sense that we're like a um, well-oiled machine and we each know our task, but like John and I are planning out our next meal prep and we meal prep for a month at a time. Oh, wow. And also just, just so I can make it really clear is I meal prep for Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. because we both work insane hours and I actually work six days a week. So mm-hmm. um, I, I, I don't, I have one day off a week mm-hmm. and I don't want it just completely tut, always just meal prep, meal prep, meal prep, yeah. because then I, I felt like I had no life. Right. And so what we would do is we, we planned the great cook off and it's an entire weekend. And like, we're in the middle of planning one out right now. We will literally cook chicken eight different ways, eight different flavor profiles, eight different styles. And then we'll make 12, 13 different things out of those eight different ways that chicken was cooked. Mm -hmm. Same thing with uh, ground turkey. Um, Or if we're, regardless of what the proteins are that we've selected, we will cook them in a multitude of different manners uh, or flavor profiles. And so you don't really feel like you're eating the same thing, even though you're eating the same thing. Yeah. And, um, and it was really hard because we did eat too much red meat when we start before we started. Mm -hmm. And now I I use red meat as a treat. Like once a month is my, yeah. uh, But I'm not wasting my red meat on something like cheap cut of meat. I'm going to go all in with that filet mignon. Yeah, And I want a really nice cut and I want it to be spot on if I'm going to eat red meat and have to, yeah. to work that off. Yeah. So, um, and as far as the veggies go, same thing. I mean, John has his favorite go-tos. I have mine. And the fact that these are all portioned out ahead of time and it's just grab and go, you can just pick what you want. So you're not stuck mm-hmm having what they're having or, or whatever. And I do the meal prep so we can eat well during the week, because sometimes I didn't like last night, I didn't get home till seven 30 yeah. and I didn't want to spend an hour cooking and not right. eating until eight 30 or nine. I needed to eat in five minutes that happened. Yeah. And I had grilled chicken. I had broccoli and cauliflower and 
Um, I had um, oven roasted baby red potatoes. It was delicious. Oh, it sounds good. Yeah. And all very well seasoned. And um, so it was very good. And John whipped it up in two minutes for me. Nice. And so I got to eat within minutes of walking in the door. And then we free cook on the weekends. Mm-hmm. That's where we cook meals that we call one and done's. Yeah. A one and done means it doesn't hold up to freezing and reheating. Yep. So, and certain meals just don't taste good after they've been, you know, frozen. Mm-hmm. So we have those on the weekends. This is one heck of a system and I absolutely love it. And I see how it works so well for you guys. It's brilliant. I mean, you guys have a system and I think the fact that you guys do it together too, there's so much built in support. You've built in the variety, you know, your go-to foods that make you feel good. That in itself is its own reward because feeling great feels great. So I totally see why you're cruising on your nutrition. Now, talk to me about what it, what it's like to be in your body right now at 62, stronger than you were at like 58. Um, and like what kind of things that you've been doing with your body and your exercise. I think we've talked to a good amount of nutrition. I'd like to switch gears and, and speak about your relationship to your body and weight training and all the exercises you did and, and how that, that progress has been going. Um, well, I, I still sometimes can't believe it's real. Hmm. I still giggle about it. Um, I love it. I love being in my new body. And I thought that I had managed to see everybody that I, that knew me before. And, um, so when it's, when it happens, which it just did this last week, I ran into somebody I hadn't seen in apparently two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And they said, wait a minute, Diane, is that you? And I was like, (sighs) Uh, yeah, I thought you were just going to like ignore me, like, you know, ghost me or something as you walk by. And she goes, I didn't know that was you. And uh, she goes, until you started talking. And I was, because I was talking to somebody else on the street yeah. um, out in front of my business. And they walked by and turned around, did a double tag and jaw open. And what's going on? And how did you do this? And oh my gosh, and look at you. And it was like, it's like a little parade every time that happens. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I eat that stuff up like candy. Yeah. I can tell that I I can tell if you feel so good for you to get these little rewards when you get to bump into people and just reaffirms all your effort, how good you feel and you get to celebrate that. And I think you'd certainly deserve to be celebrated. And, you know, every day, I know John certainly celebrates you. I want to celebrate you here right now in this moment for, for totally kicking butt, because I think that there are a lot of women especially when you're in fifties, sixties and beyond hormones are changing stuff's not working as well. Gravity's taking a toll. And the fact that you can like turn things around is, is, is really incredible. So speak to that, speak to, please speak to like the mentality of what you see, or maybe what you might've like thought yourself in the past that you're maybe over the hill or it's too late. Like, can you speak to that mindset or maybe someone oh. starting out who I'd like you to, to share some wisdom on, on wisdom and perspective on that. Yeah, it, it kind of also goes back to that whole internal dialogue um, mm-hmm. where, you know, it was really defeating when I felt like I had to give up and just be this overweight old lady. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because everyone I looked at that was in my age group either looked way older than me, in my opinion, um, or or was either my weight or more. And the way I carried my weight was also extremely awkward. Mm -hmm. And because I carried all my weight in my stomach area. So I literally looked nine months pregnant all the time. Mm -hmm. And it, it hurt, it hurt to put on shoes. It hurt to bend over it. And my job is very physically demanding. And so I always had like a hel- a helper, you know, a, a, some other person yeah. worked there that was lift that box, grab that bucket, this and that. And uh, because it was too much, it was just too much for me physically. And I noticed as I advanced through the program and as I got stronger and upped my weights from body weight to, you know, 
three pound weights to five pounds to eight to 10 and so on and so on until I was, you know, all of a sudden finally shoulder pressing 15 pounds comfortably and looking to move on to twenties, but twenties being a little too much and wishing I had 17s, you know? Um, but the, the way it made me feel the, I felt like empowered every day and it got to the point because everyone that works for me is younger than me by a decades younger. And it, I know I'm a bit obnoxious with this, but when they say, this is so hard, I'm so tired. I'm like, okay, I'm 62 and nobody's tired until I'm tired and I'm not tired. So let's get going, pick that up. Let's go, let's go. Talk, talk. And it's because it is physically demanding the only time I haven't been able to do my job is when I've had these few little setbacks, we'll call them. Yeah. That have tried to derail me. So, um, but I, I don't know. I, I think that my internal dialogue now is so good and so positive. I, I'm, I just have way more confidence yeah. and I own what I do instead of, like trying to hide it. Like if I don't want to have a drink, I just say, I look, I'm not drinking. You don't need to, we're good. I don't, Mm -hmm. I don't need to owe anyone an explanation. Or when we go to a social gathering and somebody in the, you know, quips and says, well, Diane's not going to eat that. I said, you're right. I'm not. I said, that is at least an hour and a half in the gym right there on that plate, right there. And I have to weigh it out. Do I want to spend that hour and a half in the gym? To have a couple slices of salami? No, not really. It's not that important <laughs> to me to have that. Yeah. There's yeah, other the perspective and, changes. Yeah. But I always, you know, I've learned through this process too that when I go somewhere, I I'm awesome. I always bring a side dish. I'll bring a side dish. I always bring something John and I will be able to fill up on. Nice. That's smart. <clears throat> You've thought about this. I like it. A lot. It's like a little, yeah, yeah. It, Cause you will think about it, but it's not like you always have the plan. It's that experiences along the way reveal new tidbits for you. Mm-hmm. And you went to a party, there was nothing you can eat. Now you bring the side dish, you know, this is, it, it's really cool. And ultimately we think what, what shapes up is what you have is a life style that is directed towards the value of health. Mm-hmm. One that, one that your husband shares and, and this is like just a beautiful container for you crazy people to go out into the world, continue to make your businesses and make amazing memories. And, and it's just like, I say crazy from a happy place. It just like, I feel your young energy, like beaming out of you that you guys have so much more life and stuff to explore. And it's really beautiful. And I'm just so appreciative that you have that. Now I want to end with, um, a couple questions. One is what does it mean to you now to be a fit mother? What does the word mean to you? What does the idea mean to you? What comes up in your mind and your heart when, when I mentioned fit mother? It's part of who I am. It's part of my fabric. Um, I, 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 gosh, I, it kind of sounds arrogant to say that I feel like I am fit mother Mm -hmm. and it's, it's part of, it's helped me regain my own identity Mm-hmm. And to finally feel happy and content and comfortable in my own skin. Um, I didn't shop for clothes for years because unless I needed something, because I, I didn't want to see that size. Now I can't wait to go shopping and spend money and, and get new things and treat myself and do girly stuff. I love that. So when I think about Fit Mother I, or, I, I, it's, it's just part of who I am now. It's part of my fabric and it keeps me on the straight and narrow and it helps me make great decisions or at least pretty darn good decisions. Yeah. I'm not saying I don't go off the rails. Don't get me wrong. And, um, I mean, my only saving grace with pizza is I never really cared for it. Mm -hmm. It's not a big deal, but I had pizza recently and it was darn delicious but I had to work it off, you know, mm-hmm. it just is, it's second nature now. It, I don't really have to think about it. I feel like I'm on autopilot. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's, except it's the autopilot in the direction of good health versus the autopilot in the direction of weight gain, lethargy, mm-hmm. medical issues there on before. You're on autopilot either way, you know, but like you, you've not, that's not exactly true, but you've created this new autopilot that's moving in the opposite 45 degree angle as the old one. And that's, what's so incredible because you have positive momentum. That's a beautiful answer. And the final thing I want to give you the opportunity to do, and and this is just because I know there's a lot of women that you've impacted their lives inside the Fit Mother Group, and many of them who have impacted your life. If you'd like to share anything with the whole Fit Mother family, um, you know, just anybody shout outs or or stuff to the ladies who helped you along the way. Um, you know, I know a lot of them are probably listening to this right now with smiles on their faces, just knowing the amazing journey you went on. Anything you'd like to say to the community before we wrap this up? Well, the sisterhood is definitely one of the cornerstones of what got me through this. I mean, the accountability group is and uh, was back then for me very, very amazing. I think that um, early on, I uh, latched on to uh, two very special ladies um, right right out of the shoot, and that was uh, uh, Steph and Amy. And we just seem to have, you know, great pom-poms and cheerleading uh, for each other. And um, we really helped each other through a lot of emotional things. Um, We were all going through the same thing because one of the things we all had in common is we had an enormous amount of weight to lose. Mm -hmm. And we weren't in there, not to say that if you only have 10 pounds or 20 pounds to lose, that's not respectable. It totally is. Um, But you seem a lot closer to the finish line than when you're looking at uh, 70 pounds, 80 pounds, 100 pounds. Those those are really hard numbers to to try and um, um, process in your own brain of, of it feeling so overwhelming that I will never get there that it's too hard. This is too hard. It isn't hard. It really isn't. And I think that once you understand the actual simplicity of this program and the fact that you really still get to do everything you want to do, we're just cleaning up the act a little bit. Yeah. That's it. We're just cleaning it up. And the greatest and so, I mean, I love the community. And then along the way, I've met all these other great ladies in the group that are just hilarious and fun and always have great, you know, things to share. And so it's, it's a community of us ladies um, that I wouldn't trade for anything, to, for sure. I just wouldn't. Um, and, and if there was any advice I was going to give to anyone new coming in, and this is going to might seem a little blunt, but I'm going to do it. Leave your excuses at the door because the only thing holding you back, the only thing holding you back are all the excuses. Hmm. And once I put the excuses in a little box and buried it out in the backyard, it was full steam ahead. Mm -hmm. And it also goes back to that internal dialogue. Excuses are nasty internal dialogue. That's it. Yeah, I think that is it. I think that's a perfect, perfect way to end this. It starts with the mind and then you create the routine and now you can have the beautiful momentum you have. And Diane, thank you again for being truly fit mother. When you said I am fit mother, like I felt that, like, I think you really are what fit mother represents through and through. And you're living it, walking the walk, talking the talk. And I just have this vision of you out outside your floral shop, just like beaming with your new health and energy and everyone who comes in contact with you. And that brings me so much joy because you're not only healthier, but I know you're happier, you're more aligned and this like life gets better for all those around you. So thank you for, for being what really we represent here at FMP. And I appreciate you coming on the show today. Well, thank you very, very much for having me. But most importantly, this is this is big for me because you you're the man who gave me this opportunity. My my husband gifted it, but you you invented this, mm. and I just am so excited that I have the opportunity to tell you to your face just how happy I am, and to to be in your presence and to be a fit mom Mm -hmm. and to have represented this program and this, this lifestyle so well. Um, And I cannot 
thank you enough for caring about people because had you not cared like you do, you would have never invented this. And I would still be overweight. So thank you from the bottom of my heart to yours. I, I received that fully. I feel that fully. Um, it's a great gift you just gave me. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. 